Stockton, a Philadelphian who has fought only in Philadelphia and Atlantic City through the years. He is finally getting his moment in the sun. He, at the age of 28, is getting his first title shot on this level, even though he is the USBA junior welterweight champion. He fought Aaron Pryor as an amateur in 1976 and lost. As you can see, Pryor, 29 years old, and Hinton is 28. Both weighed in at exactly 140 today. And here we go, first of 15. Aaron Pryor, despite being inactive, fighting only once in the last year and a half, well known to boxing aficionados as a non-stop action type fighter, a man who off time seeks an early knockout. Hinton, a left-hander, quite in contrast to Aaron Pryor. He has good boxing skills, good hand speed, exhibits a good defense, can take a punch, but really lacks knockout power himself. So contrasting styles will be very much in evidence in this one. Pryor, who defeated Alexis Arguello twice, once in 1982, and again in 83, you'll recall, retired, but put that in quote marks. What he really did was take a rest. The WBA then did not recognize Pryor as its champion, even though the IBF still had him on top. Then he came back last June, beat Nicky Frolano in a 15-rounder at Toronto after he had Frolano down twice in the first round. And now after a three-week postponement, he's back in action in this fight. This fight was postponed from the 9th of February due to a rib injury sustained by Pryor in training. First round scheduled for 15. As is the case with any of Pryor's opponents, you really have to look to survive those first couple of rounds when Pryor normally comes out in a more active posture than he's exhibiting here in the first round today. You'll recall against Arguello, he came out aggressively, flailing away nonstop, and was able to maintain that pace throughout the major portions of both those fights. That again was the case against Berlano, who he had down twice in the first round in June. But he's not quite as active here in the first round as we've come to expect. Hit with a nice combination. Hitting is anything but flashy. Won't necessarily get your attention. But a quite functional fighter, a man with a good record. And a man with a chance, finally, after all these years of fighting on undercards and fighting in Atlantic City and Philadelphia and nowhere else, getting a chance for some national recognition and, of course, a, a chance to win a title. Coming up to the end of the first round, good right jab by Kenton. IBF Junior Waterway Championship first round coming to an end this one scheduled to go 15 second round now Aaron Pryor out of Cincinnati but now living in Miami and Gary Hinton the Philadelphia for the IBF World Junior Waterway Championship Pryor not exhibiting the non-stop aggressiveness to which we've been accustomed in that first round. The other thing, Hinton, not as mobile as we might have expected in that first round. Perhaps that was a, a byproduct of the fact that Pryor wasn't as active as perhaps Hinton did expect. But Hinton has good speed, good movement, but more, more flat-footed in that first round. Good right by Pryor, but... Hinton comes back with a left hand. Hinton basically a counter-punching type. Now Pryor begins to put the pressure on. Pryor not only can exhibit great punching power, just look at that record, 32 KOs and 35 fights, but he can take a punch. Remember what Arguello did in the 13th round of that first fight? Everybody thought Arguello was ready to put Pryor away. He just shrugged it off. Pryor contending he's in outstanding shape despite that three-week postponement. Aaron trying to get everything back in order. 
as Hinton delivered a low blow on that last exchange. But Pryor trying to get his boxing career in basically what's been a pretty stormy personal existence back in order. If you follow boxing, you know that Pryor said marital problems, problems with his manager. They were in court, Buddy LaRosa, but Buddy is back in his corner right now. He's had legal problems. He almost quit again three weeks ago. He now has, among other people in his corner, Sylvester Stallone, who is here, involved with the promotion of Pryor's fight. And there's little doubt that if Pryor can once again exhibit the skills to which we've grown accustomed, he's as exciting as anybody as Hinton comes in with a left hand, but Pryor comes right back. Hinton more active than we might have expected here in this second round. As we said before, normally exhibiting very good defensive skills, he figured to, as he told us yesterday, to go with the flow, and in a sense he is doing that. Pryor is giving him, I think, more of an opening than Hinton might have expected, and he's trying to capitalize on it. One thing about Pryor, he has been relatively easy to hit in the past. In fact, quite easy to hit. But as we said, he has been able to take punches, and he's also cut now over the right eye and begins to stagger as he turns his back. It might have been a butt. It might have been a butt indicates as much as we stay here after the second round but the ring physician will come in there it is and it is a quite nasty gash at least as we look at it with a naked eye here Most at ringside in atlantic off. city preparatory to the, the beginning of the round piece. three where's the mouth so the result okay. and obviously in pain is aaron Pryor as they Let's work go. on Let's that go. cut there's some grease here in New Jersey this one scheduled for 15 rounds and there is some question about how much further it can go right now as we take a look at the obviously painful cut sustained it's possible it's right here that's that was it right there you can see him wince and grimace and it was right there the point at which he was cut but he seems to have at least momentarily shaken it off as we start now the third round. Referee is Rudy Battle. He does not have a voice in the scoring. Larry Wallace, Phil Newman, and Frank Cairo are the three judges scoring this one at ringside. Ten-point must system. And in the IBF, there is a standing eight count, which can be ordered by Battle. There is no three knockdown rule, no saving by the belt, except in the 15th round. Third round, Pryor cut from an accidental butt in the second round. Aaron in the past loves to go for the head. Very rarely works on the body, likes to stay upstairs. Hinton, moving well here in the third round. Again, not flashy, don't expect anything flashy from him. Doesn't really have knockout power. But good boxing skill. A good record. Some very fine performances in the last couple of years from him. Earning him a shot at the title here. Third round in Atlantic City, scheduled for 15. Hinton with a, a good right hand. Hinton with a three-inch height advantage. Another right to the side of Pryor's head. There is Sylvester Stallone looking on from ringside. Again, he is involved in the promotion of Aaron Pryor's fights. In fact, Pryor has been training out in Culver City, California. Partially under the watchful eye of Stallone in a gym that Stallone built for him. Richard Giacchetti is also now training Pryor. 
a new man in the corner of Aaron, and if that name is familiar, he for many years with the heavyweight champion Larry Holmes. A good left hand again. You wonder if that cut from the butt is affecting Pryor. He is not nearly as active here in round three as we might have anticipated. In fact, quite a slow beginning for a man who formerly was nothing but a total whirlwind. Fourth round in a fight in which Aaron Pryor figures to win, but maybe in for more than he had thought this morning in light of the fact he's been cut. Hinkins exhibiting the skill to which uh, his opponents have grown accustomed. Pryor didn't seem particularly concerned about that yesterday, but Aaron has not nearly been as sharp early on in this fight as we've come to expect, and again, part of that has to do, I'm sure, with the fact he's fought only once in 18 months. Then again, Hinton has had a fight nearly eight months since he beat Brett Lally in the same ring in July. Pryor issuing some objection, I'm not quite sure what it is, to the referee Rudy battle. Could be filming, possibly, but as you can tell, Vaseline smearing the cut on the forehead of Aaron Pryor sustained on a butt in that second round. If this fight goes close to the distance, you have to watch Pryor very closely now. In terms of conditioning, he was in tremendous shape, of course, for both our Arguello fights. He really wasn't in terrific shape for that Toronto fight, even though he won a decision in Toronto in June against a very game opponent. But Trelano is in hit and also finding once in 18 months and with all of the problems that Pryor has had away from the ring as well you just wonder about his condition one thing to keep in mind is this one if it does progresses very far Grown so used to seeing Pryor throw non-stop punches, one right after another, throwing caution to the winds normally, not caring about defense. It's sort of odd to watch Pryor just kind of walk around the ring. Come on, Pryor, you win it! Come on! Good right hand, jab by Hinton. Hinton certainly holding his own. I'm not necessarily sure he's dictating the pace of this fight, but certainly he is very much in control. And Pryor does not look like the Pryor we've seen in recent times. Another good right hand by Hinton. And that jab in. Pryor countering with a jab of his own. End of the fourth round at hand. Back in Atlantic City, Al Michaels at ringside with you. This one close to four rounds. Aaron Pryor on the right, Gary Hinton on the left. Pryor sustaining a cut on his forehead from a butt in the second round. Hinton very much holding his own. And he would be a very decided underdog in this one. Again, our other element on ABC's Live World of Sports today, live coverage of the Florida Derby. First big prep for the three-year-old for the Kentucky Derby as Pryor lands a combination. But Hinton holding his ground. And Hinton comes back with a combination of his own, partially deflected by the gloves of Aaron Pryor. Good left hand again by Hinton. Hinton measuring him, seeking that opening. Left hand partially blocked by Pryor. Hinton just standing right in there, measuring, seeking that opening. But here comes Pryor right back at him. Hinton with a right hand, again getting through. That cut again, that dash. 
opening on the forehead of Aaron Pryor. This the IBF Junior Welterweight Division, which is similar to the WBC Super Lightweight category, and there is a WBC Super Lightweight Champion, Billy Costello, who recently defended his crown in Kingston, New York, two weeks ago today, in fact. A minute to go now, and this is the fifth round. Wild right, lancing right hand by Hinton. Pryor trying to come back inside. The Hinton again, good movement. Holding his ground now. Hinton caution for holding behind the head. Lashing out with a left hand here in the fifth round. It's about ready to come to an end. Scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. This one's for you. For all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. In Atlantic City now, we start round six for the IBF Junior Wallaway Championship. Gary Hinton with some swelling having developed now just under his right eye. And the champion, Aaron Pryor with a gash on his forehead from a second round butt. Sixth round. Even though Pryor has tremendous knockout power, 32 KOs, 35 fights, quite a few ringside observers expect this one, if not necessarily to go the distance, certainly into the 12th, 13th, 14th round perhaps, simply because of Hinton's skills, which have been in evidence early on. He doesn't leave himself open. Pryor pursuing, attempting to become more aggressive now here in the sixth round. Hinton is not as active as he was in the early round. Crowd chanting Gary, Gary for Hinton. A lot of his friends, fans, family over from Philadelphia, which is only an hour and ten minutes from Atlantic City on the expressway. Pryor again landing a good right hand. Hinton, instead of throwing the combinations that we saw early on, throwing some isolated punches right now, but Pryor, again with that gash opening up on his forehead, a little right hand, chopping right delivered by Hinton that time. Again, Pryor's the type you can rarely tell if he's hurt. He's Gives you no indication at all. Remember that punch if you saw that first Arguello fight that Alexis threw in the 13th round that would have sent just about any other man down to the canvas. He barely flinched and came right back. Final minute of the sixth round. Lunging right by Hinton, but Pryor comes back to the body. Aaron working a bit more underneath in the final half minute now of round six. And Pryor initiating the action. And Hinton able to counter. End of the sixth round coming up. 
round seven now. Hinton, after a very impressive start, has slowed down in the last two rounds. And even though Pryor doesn't really look like the Aaron Pryor of old, I think he's performing well enough to at least be leading on my card at the moment. Seventh round scheduled for 15. Again, the referee does not figure in the scoring. That's done by the three judges at ringside. Pryor is definitely not having an easy time of it. And at the age of 29, fighting now for the first time, second time really, in a year and a half. So he does hope to be much more active. In fact, he'd like to fight, he told us, six times over the next two years. Could be that he'll move up in class and maybe seek a confrontation with Donald Curry, or maybe he'll set his sights perhaps on a lightweight title, either Billy Costello or Livingstone Bramble. At one point, of course, he was headed for a confrontation with Boom Boom Mancini, and then Bramble took care of Mancini in Buffalo. Bramble now with other problems after they found a stimulant in the urinalysis, and the WBA will have to make a ruling on that. Again, coming up, live coverage of the Florida Derby from Gulfstream Park in Hallandale after boxing. And as part of Wide World Report on Chiefs Crown also running in the Swale States. Seventh round. Reminder to our local stations that we will be taking a station break at the end of this, the seventh round. Final minute of the seventh round. Funny thing is, everything is, is relative. If you have followed Pryor in the past, you expect that non-stop aggression. There's a left hand delivered by Hinton. So in that sense, this has not been a typical Pryor fight. So in terms of action, it has been pretty good. Again, everything is in a relative sense. You just come to expect certain things of Aaron Pryor. In a way, Hinton is fighting a very Hinton-like fight, even though he has slowed down perceptibly since the fourth round. And we'll return to Atlantic City for the IBF World Junior Welterweight Championship fight after this from our local station. Aaron Pryor in the white trunks. Gary Hinton in the black trunks. Hinton is known as the executioner, which doesn't quite jive with his style. But uh, as explained by his manager, Marvin Gordon, yesterday, he said it's a double entendre, really. He executes is what he does. You think of an executioner as being a guy who goes in there and seeks that early knockout. Tries to end it. That, of course, is not the style of Hinton. But he executes boxing skills, is what Gordon says about that nickname. A reminder tomorrow, ABC Sports B and then the USFL tomorrow, week two, featuring Houston with Jim Kelly and the Tampa Bay Bandits with the USFL coming your way at 2.30 Eastern time tomorrow. Hinton again seeking that opening. Not much punching power, but he scored early on with some combinations. Has been far less active the last couple of rounds and is now trying to pick up the pace somewhat here in round eight. Again, if you joined us late, prior cut by a butt 
on the forehead in the second round. You can see the redness. Covered with Vaseline. He was stung by it. He was in obvious agony in his corner between rounds two and three, but it doesn't appear to be having any effect on Pryor's style. The only question about Pryor's style is why the change from the Pryor we've grown accustomed to? Could it be the rustiness, which you might expect from one who's only fought once in a year and a half? Toward the end of the round, not showing very much mobility. End of round eight. Ninth round now in Atlantic City. Gary Hinton out of Philadelphia in the biggest fight of his life. Trying to wrest the IBF Junior Willoway crown from Aaron Pryor in the white trunks. Pryor with only one fight in the last 17 and a half months. Would seemingly be ahead. We've got him ahead here, even though. Nobody's really had a baco round in this one. Hinton was much stronger, it appeared, early on. He has not been blown out of any round, however. He is kind of holding his own in the sense that he is still very much in the fight, but you would think that Pryor is picking up the points. Aaron has been the more aggressive and has landed the more telling blows, even though, as we say, it has not been a typical prior outing. Crowd very much responding to everything thrown by Hinton, who would be the favorite here in Atlantic City because of its proximity to Philadelphia. Right hand by Hinton. fight like this sometimes you don't know you wonder sometimes if as a good exchange here develops in the middle of the ring now Pryor trying to counter with Hinton covering up but still lashing out with a right hand Pryor tries to get in with that right which was partially picked off Pryor snaps his head back with a good left hand and begins to work now on the body and another right by Aaron Pryor throwing punches not quite as relentlessly though when he senses he might have somebody at the precipice of trouble as we've expected, come to expect from him in the past. 45 seconds remaining here in the ninth round. Day before, it's possible the judges sometimes can be influenced as you see Hinton deliver a left by audio and the fact that everything Hinton throws is accompanied by cheers or oohs or whatever from his folks here in Atlantic City, from the people back of him. And he has been scoring on occasion. So he is still in the fight as the ninth round comes to an end. round action now in Atlantic City. Al Michaels with you from ringside here. Aaron Pryor against Gary Hinton. Hinton in the black trunks for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship. The only crown now held by Aaron Pryor who of course held the WBA version for years. Won it in 1980 and successfully defended it on eight occasions and then when he announced his retirement that was the end of it. But the IBF still had him as champion. And he defended successfully against Nicky Folano last June and tries to defend successfully today. Again, that gash on the forehead of Aaron Pryor incurred during a second round butt. Hinton trying to counter. Pryor again, though, moving in on him. Round of 
approaching the halfway mark. We'll be going live to Gulfstream Park in Florida after the fight for the running of the Florida Derby. Big Kentucky Derby prep coming up on wide world. Minutes to go in round 10. This one's scheduled for 15. Matthew Saad Muhammad, former light heavyweight champ. Now engaged in a modeling career, looking on at ringside. There he is. Pryor trying to get in with that right hand. Left by Pryor had Hinton though moving backwards. Now Pryor begins to stalk him. Hinton though, very good defensively, able to block most of what Pryor throws. But Aaron though is initiating much of the action as the 10th round draws to a close. Here we go now in the 11th round scheduled for 15. Aaron Pryor in the white trunks, Gary Hinton in the black trunks. I've got Pryor ahead, but again, he's got to qualify it in the sense that neither man, as we said before, has had that outstanding a round. And even though Aaron would figure to be ahead, it's possible you can look at it uh, in another manner as well. I mean, Hinton did hold his own, especially early on. Has landed a substantial number of good blows. And all the rounds have been close, so you never know. Next week, more boxing for you. The WBC World Wallaway Championship. Milt McCrory defends his title against Pedro Valella and will come to you from Paris. From Paris, France next Saturday. Here in Atlantic City in the 11th round schedule for 15. Aaron Pryor in his first outing since late June of 84 and only his second in 17 and a half months. Trying to Take care of Hinton, a 28-year-old left-hander from Philadelphia, finally getting his moment in the sun. Crowd vociferously chanting, Gary, Gary, a lot of his partisans right there. It's been a while since Pryor has had a crowd behind him. Of course, when you fight Arguello, you're fighting the crowd as well, normally. Alexis was that popular no matter where he fought. Pryor is from Cincinnati, but has turned his back on the city of Seven Hills for the moment anyway and gone to Miami. Good left hand by Pryor, who follows it up with the right. Now hit covering up, bobbing and weaving, trying to escape the wrath of Pryor, who got in with the left and another left hand again. Hinton still moving, but Pryor is connecting with more frequency. Pryor crowding him, backing him into the ropes. Now Hinton comes back to the center of the ring and delivers a soft left hand. A reminder for our local stations, we'll be taking a station break for you at the end of this, the 11th round. Hinton taking the best that Pryor has offered in this fight at that point, and he has survived the round. I'll come in the end of the 11th, and we'll be back after this from our local stations. Let's go! You gotta keep it on it, keep the pressure on it, you can't take it. Put you in the back. We start the 12th round now in Atlantic City for the IBF Junior Wallaway Championship. Scheduled for 15, Aaron Pryor against Gary Hinton. 
it has not been a classic, obviously, but it's been a very interesting fight. Good action, especially in that 11th round, perhaps the best action round of this fight. And an interesting fight, not only in the sense that it's been close, in terms of the closeness of the rounds themselves. The prior has exhibited a somewhat different style. And it's something that no doubt he'll be questioned about, and time permitting, we'll be able to speak with him about at the end of the fight. Hinton trying to land the left. He's been able to get in, but again, really lacking any great punching power. His record is reflective of that. Only about half of his victories have ended in KOs. Whereas Pryor has knocked out 32 of his 35 opponents. But not the last one for Lano. So he went 15 with Nicky and he's perhaps on his way to going 15 here. Hinton trying to unload, but Pryor able to bob and weave and not take the full force of the punches. Florida Derby coming up following boxing. Hinton getting his title shot at the age of 28. against a very tough customer. Fire, definitely with more energy than Hinton here in the 12th round, landed a decent right. Hinton again trying to counter to the body, but Fire comes in now with that soft overhand right and then a, another right hand. A good right hand by Pryor. Again, Hinton recoiling, trying to come back. But Pryor very much in control here as the 12th round winds down in Atlantic City. Pryor and Hinton. Film of a butt in the second round. Unintentional butt. The cut covered with Vaseline here in the 13th round does not appear to have inhibited prior since it took place. He's swelling under both eyes, but he is not cut. Has not been cut by a prior. And we're into the 13th round. Since Pryor indicated that he was at the age of 29 becoming, as he put it, more mature, both out of the ring, and he said it would probably carry over into the ring. And that could be one of the reasons we have not seen the whirlwind type of punching power exhibited by him, the caution to the winds atmosphere that normally prevails at a prior fight. He has been more in control, if that's the proper phrase to use, and has paced himself certainly more than we have come to expect in the past. So it's perhaps a, a metamorphosis of sorts in the career of Aaron Pryor at the age of 29. Good right hand delivered by Pryor. And then a left hand that stunned him. He's got him backing up now. Hinton, a, a game challenger. But starting to get very much outclassed by the champion here. Coming up on the half minute mark here in round 13 as Aaron Pryor and Gary Hinton. 
for a full house in the Coker room with the Sands. They have given the crowd their money's worth. Milton McCrory next week in Paris against Pedro Valella. That should be a good one, and you'll see it on Wide World for the WBC World Welterweight Championship. And it's not out of the question that someday prior could be taking on McCrory if he wants to step up in class. Into the 13th round at hand here. All right, we go to the 14th round now as Aaron Fryer and Gary Hinton have at it. Scheduled for 15 here in Atlantic City. Oh, a smashing right by Fryer who stands with his arms up raised. He is sent to the neutral corner, mandatory eight count as Hinton got up at the count of four, but he walked into a right hand. Well, he's been very game to this point, but now the prior we've come to expect begins to take over here in the 14th round, swarming and relentless, and the end of this one could be very, very close. That is the style we have come to expect of prior that non-stop left, right, left, right, over two minutes to go here in the 14th round, which is going to be a tough one for Hinton to get through. And Pryor, if anything, has paced himself as much as Pryor has paced himself anyway in the past, so he should have plenty left as the referee, Rudy Battle, keeps a close watch on Hinton, who for the moment has survived the knockdown. He was up at the count of four. Fryer taking a mid-round breather. Fourteenth round, so Hinton surviving the knockdown in much better shape, but not in very good shape. I would fear for him on the scorecards at the moment. Fryer has really come on in the, especially in the second half of this fight. Good left hand by Hinton. And Fryer semi-flinching anyway. Half a minute to go now in round 14. Well, Pryor proved he could go 15 in that fight in Canada against Prolano. Hinton is a tougher opponent. And Aaron may be forced to go the distance again. But he has really taken charge in the second half of this fight. 10 seconds to go now in the 14th round. That stake is the IBF World Junior Wellaway Championship in Atlantic City. We'll be back. 15th and final round before a boisterous, active crowd here in Atlantic City. Most rooting for Hinton, who's put on a pretty game performance. In fact, a, more than a pretty game, a very game performance. But it's been a very good second half of the fight for Aaron Pryor. The champion's class has manifested itself very much from about the seventh round forward. Not that he was a particular slouch early on, but we were just surprised by the fact that he was not nearly as active as we had come to expect. Again, if you join this late, it's only the second time he has fought in 17 and a half months. 15th round. up something but again his history would indicate he's not a man who's gonna knock out somebody like an Aaron Pryor 
so he can flail away here in the 15th round, but it would be a, a major scoop if he were to deck Pryor. Still the chant, Gary, Gary, nothing to be ashamed of as he finally, after years of frustration, of fighting in relative anonymity, gets a chance to fight for a championship. Handles himself quite admirably and capably. But he's in against not only an undefeated champion, but a man who's been classified as a great champion by many, especially after his back-to-back -back victories over Alexis Sargreo. Pryor with that polo activity takes a right hand that had his head momentarily jerking back. First time Aaron, who has done that often in the past, has exhibited that here, and he took the left hand that time. So he's not nearly as cautious as he was early on. As cautious can ever be applied to Pryor, and he nearly got tagged here in the 15th round. Sort of taunting Hinton and took a left hand and snapped his head back as the 15th round, and the fight comes to a close. And we'll be back to get the decision on this one from Atlantic City, New Jersey, in just a moment. Well, my good friends, what do you think? What? You know All right, we're anticipating the decision momentarily now as Gary Hinton on the left and Aaron Pryor on the right have just concluded their 15-round confrontation for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship. Hinton fighting a pretty typical Hinton fight. Pryor not nearly as active as he was early on. Here was the only knockdown, a right hand, flush on the jaw, delivered by Aaron Pryor, coming in the 14th round. He got up in the count of four, took the mandatory eight. Now Ed Durian with the decision. decision. And the scoring by points as follows. Judge Frank Cairo scores 143-141 prior. <laughs> Judge Phil Newman scores 143-141 Hinton. And Judge Lawrence Wallace scores 146-139 for the winner. And still, the IBF Junior Winnerweight Champion, Aaron the Hawk Pryor. Aaron Pryor won. During the fight, we talked about how you can see it two different ways. You talk about two judges seeing it two different ways. There is a nine-point difference between the way Larry Wallace saw it, he had Pryor winning by seven points, and the way Phil Newman saw it, he had Hinton winning it by two. So a nine-point difference in a 15-round fight, which sort of amplifies the point we made in terms of the closeness of the rounds during this fight. Nobody really having that outstanding around outside of Pryor in the 14th. There is Sylvester Stallone working in Pryor's corner, congratulating the still IBF Junior Welterweight Champion. So that's the story from Atlantic City right now to Gulfstream Park in Florida and Jim McKay. The occasion, the Florida Derby, 300,000 guaranteed. A mile and an eighth the distance. The estimated attendance, a new record for the event. 34,500 in the track condition. Lightning fast today. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay.